hello guys so you're welcome to our channel all around health talk today we're going to continue our video with gonorrhea mm -hmm. so last um in our last video we talked about um the concept of uh, an sti we talked about the agent that causes gonorrhea we talked about the symptoms risk factor and all that today we want to talk about the diagnosis the prevention and the treatment of this disease so basically how do we diagnose um, gonorrhea um, basically your doctor is going to focus on the symptoms that you pre you present your doctor is going to be oriented towards gonorrhea based on the symptoms and the questions that he would ask you during your consultation the main um, form of um, diagnosing this disease is by a culture yeah in this case your doctor will take a specimen from your throat or from your um, vagina your anus your penis for the men your um, urethra and your cervix right he'll take a specimen and this specimen he's going to place in a in a kind of environment that permits the growth of the gonorrhea bacteria which is what we call the culture so if this bacteria grows in the specimen then it's a confirmation that you have gonorrhea so like that's the main way of diagnosing gonorrhea and also in the process of doing the culture your doctor might also want to do an antibiogram at the same time while doing the culture this antibiogram tells your um, doctor which antibiotics the gonorrhea bacteria is sensitive to so he knows which antibiotic to give you for treatment another way you can um, diagnose um, gonorrhea is through a gram stain still on the same specimen but we're using different um, reactive agents in this case so um, apart from the gram stain the culture you can also do other blood tests but the most specific one would be a culture to diagnose gonorrhea next is prevention how do we prevent gonorrhea now the surest way to prevent gonorrhea is by abstinence right because gonorrhea is an sti and it's the it's a disease that is mainly transmitted through sexual intercourse so the surest way not to get gonorrhea is to abstain from sexual intercourse but if you're already a sexually active person there are some measures that you have to practice in order to reduce your chances of getting gonorrhea the first one is the safe sex you have to use a condom you have to use a condom each time you have sexual intercourse you have to use a condom before contact is made between your genitals make sure that the man already has the condom on before contact is made that way you reduce your chances of getting gonorrhea next is when you notice your partner has symptoms of gonorrhea do not engage in sexual sexual intercourse do not because it's a highly contagious disease if you overlook those signs and you go ahead you are increasing your chances of getting gonorrhea so please watch out for that that's why it's very important to watch our videos eh so that you know the symptoms and signs of gonorrhea right next is when you get a new partner right you get a new partner who you are intimate with try to make sure that he or she gets tested before you engage in any intimate relations with that person make sure that the person gets tested for all stis that there are please so that you can reduce your chances of getting gonorrhea and then try to maintain one sexual partner be faithful be responsible please this way you can protect yourself from not just gonorrhea but like other sexual sexually transmitted infections that we have but yes try to maintain one sexual partner and lastly try to always get regular checkups if you don't get regular checkups there's no way that you can know if you have an STI or not and there's no way that you can know if your partner has an STI or not so sit down and talk with your doctor and come up with a, with a plan on how frequently you need to go for regular checkups this way you can keep track of your health status and know if you have any of these STIs okay so 
we want to talk about uh, treatment. How do we treat gonorrhea in the case that you already have gonorrhea? Generally, the treatment for gonorrhea is antibiotics um, because, as we said, um, gonorrhea is a bacteria. So you'll be treated with antibiotics, which is what we call dual therapy, which means you're combining two antibiotics to treat you. Apart from the antibiotic therapy, there are other things that you need to do. For example, you need to abstain from sexual intercourse at least until seven days after you have started your treatment and until your symptoms have completely disappeared. Because while you still have the symptoms and even though you might still be taking treatment, if you don't respect this time interval, you are still contagious and you can pass the disease to someone else. What else do we have to do? If you've been tested positive for gonorrhea, it is important for you to uh, test for other STIs. If you have gonorrhea, it's very possible that you also have chlamydia infection mm -hmm. or you have HIV or you have syphilis. So it's important for you to make sure you test for these um, other STIs. And if you have gonorrhea, but at the moment you're not sexually active, we need to test and treat all the sexual partners you've had in the last two months okay the two months before you start presenting symptoms of gonorrhea all the sexual partners you've had in those in 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 the two months prior to your symptoms need to get tested and treated just like you another treatment we want to focus on is the treatment of neonates we talked about um, neonates um, newborn babies having um, gonococcal infections because they get it from their mother. Normally, um, in almost every part of the world or in developed parts of the world, it is obligatory for you to do a gonococcal ophthalmia prophylaxis for newborn babies, whether or not the mother has gono um, gonorrhea or not. It's like a law for you to do this prophylaxis. Why, is it, why do we call it prophylaxis? It's like prevention of mm -hmm. the infection. Gonococcal ophthalmia is the conjunctivitis that this baby gets from the infection. Um, generally, this, if this baby is not treated, the baby can get to a point of losing his or her sight. So this is very important. The mother would um, transfer this disease to the baby um, through contact um, in the moment of delivering the baby. But even if this baby is born through vaginal means or C-section, you still have to give the prophylaxis. And this prophylaxis is especially important in women who do not have antenatal care. Because if you go for antenatal care, all the necessary tests will be done and then they will be able to tell if you have gonorrhea. So if you're a person who doesn't have antenatal care, or didn't go for antenatal care, okay, your child will have to receive the prophylaxis. If the woman was someone who had history, if the woman is someone who has history of sexually transmitted infections in the past, her child will have to get the prophylaxis. If she's a woman who abuses drugs, she, her child will also have to get the prophylaxis. In the case that this baby doesn't get the prophylaxis and later develops this infection, this ophthalmia, the symptoms will begin to appear between two to five days after birth and then this baby will actually need to receive treatment with antibiotics and then we'll also have to treat the mother of the baby and we also have to treat the sexual partner of the mother so these are the different ways that we can treat gonorrhea infections so that's all we have for you guys on gonorrhea our next topic is going to be syphilis which is another sti so you guys don't forget to watch out for that that's also very important so as usual don't forget to like subscribe comment share and and don't forget to also send in your questions we've already talked about the q a session that we're going to do so please send in your questions we're waiting and we're very much ready to answer you guys so please send in your questions so see you next week bye, bye.